Unohana's Bankai Minazuki has always been something of a weird and special case, in that ever since its first reveal in chapter 526, we have had basically no idea what this thing can actually do. Unlike virtually every other ability in Bleach, Unohana's Bankai came with no explanation whatsoever, meaning that in the years following, Fans have tried their best to piece together what the abilities of Unohana's Bankai actually were, using the most vague and abstract of clues. And we all kind of hoped that when the anime finally got round to adapting this part of the story, we might finally get some closure as to what Unohana's Bankai's abilities actually were, maybe some kind of an explanation, or even just a better look at what this thing actually is. And now that time has finally come. Two years ago, in the September of 2020, I made a video asking the question, what does Unohana's Bankai actually do? Hoping to try and deduce its powers and abilities based on what little evidence we got in that original chapter. This all stemmed from the fact that Unohana had something of an unusual Bankai reveal in chapter 526, The Battle, during her fight with Kenpachi Zaraki. So I'm kind of working on my episode 10 review, but as I I was working on it, I really just wanted to talk about Unohana's Bankai first and foremost to finally follow up from that video I made all those years ago. So that's why this is out before the review. The review will be out just a couple of days from now. Unohana surprise activates her Bankai at the start of the chapter. We don't see really any kind of an activation ritual. Instead, on the very next page, the Bankai Minazuki seems to already be activated and the fight continues from there. There is no explanation given as to what it can do, no showcase of any potential abilities, and while some may have found that refreshing, the vast majority of the Bleach community was left scratching its head, and it was made even worse when she died in the next chapter and her Bankai disappeared. What could we actually gauge from the chapter itself? Well, her sword seemed to be replaced by some kind of a crimson blood-like whip that could have also been acid, as it seemed to bubble and hiss upon activation. After this moment, she would just continue to swing it around as though it were a normal sword. But what compounded this issue, what made things even more confusing, was that this was immediately followed up by a sequence, a strange ethereal dreamlike sequence where both she and Zaraki were stripped down to the bone. Their very flesh seemed to melt away and they both turned into these dueling skeletons. Many took this to be a confirmation that Unohana's blade, her whip, whatever it was, we couldn't really tell, was actually coated in acid and was literally dissolving both of them down to the bone. And then Unohana would proceed to revive both of them and the fight would carry on. This was also reinforced by the name of her Bankai, Minazuki, here meaning all things end. Kind of again playing into that idea that Unohana was dissolving everything around her into nothing. While I think the acid theory was the more popular one overall, and it was the one I chose to stand behind as well, there was a second theory running concurrently, and that was that the sequence where Kenpachi and Unohana were turning into skeletons was just that, a dream, a vision, a metaphor that Kubo was creating, showing both of these fighters as being stripped down to their very base instinct, their core, removing them of their inhibitions, of their pretenses, and revealing to us as the reader who both of these people actually were in their very heart, in their very soul, being embodiments of both death and battle. In that original video, I did end up saying that I thought the acid theory was more likely, however, I could quite easily see the other theory also being true as well, and actually ended up with potential reasoning for both. For the acid theory, I put forth the fact that a Bankai and a Shikai are generally at least somewhat linked, and with Unohana's Shikai, she would heal people in the stomach acid of her gigantic manta ray, so it only made sense that her Bankai would generate an acid that kills everything it touches. The other theory I had, however, was built on the foundational idea that Unohana's blade was now made of blood. The blood accrued from all of her victims from thousands of years past. 
I thought this was cool, as it gave her a similarity to Yamamoto, whose own Bankai allowed him to resurrect the charred corpses of his own victims. Unohanas would do something similar in that it would summon the blood of all those she had killed during her time as a criminal. And that also seemed to make sense to me. Kubo was putting a lot of emphasis on these ancient captains, on the skeletons in their closets, and their past mistakes coming back to haunt them, and so it seemed to make a lot of sense to me that both of their Bankai would be reflective of their past crimes. And so, yeah, for years we have been waiting for more information on this Bankai to desperately try and know what it actually does. Was the acid theory correct? Was she just wielding a blade of blood? What on earth was going on with both her and Zaraki turning into skeletons? And so, just this week, with episode 10 of the Thousand Year Blood War titled The Battle, we finally got this sequence, and was it extended? Was there any explanation? The answer is... Sort of. When Unohana activates her Bankai in the episode, we actually get a brand new activation ritual that in my opinion totally transforms the perception of the Bankai on the whole. After saying Bankai in a really awesome way, by the way, Unohana grabs her blade with her bare hand, tightly gripping it to the point where she begins bleeding from between her fingers, and then drags her hand across the full length of her sword, coating it in her blood, dragging that blood across the blade, and eventually transforming the sword itself into a rippling, oozing blade of blood. As she says the name Minazuki, we see her pulling this stringy, almost dripping blade of blood across herself, as even more blood suddenly rains down from the sky above, drenching the floor and generating a literal lake of blood that the two of them must now fight atop. Again, although we got this moment where Unohana is seemingly generating blood at the start of her Bankai, in the original chapter, it is absolutely not clear what is going on, and I never got from it that it was creating an area of effect ability that was absolutely coating the entire arena in a surface of blood. So, immediately we know a couple of new things about her Bankai. It is absolutely blood that she is utilising, not acid, as she seems to use her own blood to initiate the Bankai, and the moment it is activated, it activates an area of effect ability, much like the Bankai of her contemporaries Yamamoto, Kyoraku, only this one rains blood from the sky and creates a literal ocean, a sea of blood that her and her opponent must fight upon. While Unohana doesn't give any explanation of her Bankai whatsoever, much like in the original chapter, I feel the slight extensions to this fight are enough to finally piece together a good idea of what it can do. Basically, once the Bankai has been activated, Unohana's Bankai Minazuki controls blood. It allows Unohana to almost freely manipulate both the blood around her and potentially even the blood inside of her, as we see it immediately heals one of the wounds that she has. All of the blood around her, including this blood lake that they're now fighting on, acts as an extension of Unohana's own sword, allowing her to control blood in such a way that she can attack somebody at range and keep herself closely defended. We get quite a few examples of her attacking at range, seemingly whipping her blade through the blood lake and sending a sharp blade-like arc of blood towards her opponent, and she can do this almost continuously, totally freely and at will, sending as many of these blood arcs as she likes towards her opponent. One great example of this we get is when she sends Zaraki flying into one of the pillars, seemingly with just the force of a regular attack, but then instantly follows it up with one of her blood swings, slashing at him and causing him to fall to the ground. This happens immediately after he hits the wall. He is helpless to do anything about the second swing that comes from afar. So this is honestly quite powerful because Unohana still has her own fighting prowess. She can still fight up close incredibly dangerously, but the moment any kind of a distance is put between her and her opponent, she can begin flinging these extremely sharp arcs of blood at her enemy as though she were swinging an extraordinarily long and fast blade. 
As I mentioned in my live reaction, one of my main takeaways from this was that it bears a striking resemblance to both the character of Millennia from the game Elden Ring and the character of Lady Maria from the game Bloodborne, two of my favourite games of all time, so I am more than happy with this comparison. But there is a little more to this Barnakai as well. As I mentioned earlier, she's able to use it defensively too, and we can see that Unohana is able to generate essentially a spinning vortex of blood blades around herself to create a dense shield. We see at one point Zaraki tries to lunge at her while this frenzy of blood is whirring around her and he kind of just bounces off of it, unable to make it through. And at one point as we see Zaraki growing stronger, he grows strong enough to shatter this vortex. We see him bring down his blade and basically just destroy all of the blood blades around Unohana, sending them spiralling into the air and creating enough of an opening that Zaraki can then slice her on the face. Although it's difficult to say for sure, since we don't actually see it happening outside of that first wound being healed, both the wounds Unohana sustains while her Bankai is active, being cut on the shoulder and then that cut on the face, do seem to disappear in all subsequent shots, so I am inclined to believe that her Bankai can continuously heal her body, presumably as long as that blood is around. But that really is only speculation on my part, and yes, a lot of this still is speculation as we don't get any kind of a verbal explanation whatsoever, but I'm just happy that we even have this, as I think we do now have a pretty concrete idea of what she can do. And then, as Zaraki fatally stabs Unohana through the throat, we get that brief shot of all the blood seemingly disappearing. So, while no explanation of Unohana's Bankai is actually given, it does feel like we can finally, I think, put this to bed. There is absolutely no acid being used here whatsoever. The visuals of them both turning into skeletons is definitely a metaphor for stripping them of their inhibitions of all pretenses and revealing who they really are at heart. These bloodthirsty monsters who simply want to do the dance of death all the time. They want to do nothing but engage in ferocious, satisfying battle. Unohana's Bankai controls blood and it is activated with a sacrifice of Unohana's own blood as she grabs her blade so tightly that her hand begins to bleed and then draws that across the length of the sword. The Bankai follows this up with a passive area of effect ability which rains blood down from the sky, turning the battlefield into a sea of blood which they must then fight on top of. Now fighting atop this sea of blood, Unohana is free to manipulate it as she sees fit, generating numerous blood blades, essentially, that act as an extension of her own arm. Some examples of which we see include her whipping long-range blood blades at Zaraki and striking him from afar, almost instantaneously one after the other, as well as creating a defensive vortex of whirring blood blades around herself as well. It seems like she has has to continue striking the air around her to generate this, which makes me wonder how good it actually is as an offensive capability, although she does seem to be running towards Zaraki, so I imagine it does almost act like a whirlwind torrent of blades. If Zaraki is unable to get through, he will get cut. And that's about it. Her Bankai isn't around for very long, but we do get a considerably clearer look at it here than we got in that original chapter. And I think, honestly, finally we can put this one to bed. It seems like we finally have a much better idea and understanding of what her Bankai does. And for that, I am extremely grateful to the anime. All right, guys, but that's it for the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below what you think of Unohana's Bankai and of its appearance, its portrayal in the latest episode of the Thousand Year Blood War anime. I'd love to hear if you agree with my thoughts on this, that it's finally been properly revealed what it can actually do, albeit without any kind of a verbal explanation. Is this good enough for you? I'm pretty content with saying it's good enough for me. Make sure to hit subscribe if you haven't done already for more Bleach videos like this every single week. Give the video a thumbs up if you haven't done to support me and the channel. And if you want to take that support for me another step further, I do also have a Patreon as well. And as always, I just want to say a massive thank you and shout out to everyone supporting me over there on Patreon. I really do appreciate it. All right, guys, but until next time, I'll catch you later. I'll see you then.